How's it going? Shannon Lucas here. I'm at Irving Plaza in New York. I'm the Rock Out. So hanging out here in Irving Plaza and all of a sudden the corner of my ass is Shannon. Like I'm like, dude, what's up? How are you? I'm terrific. It's good to be back here. <laughs> it's been a while. It has been a while, right? Uh, two years? Two years that I've been here, I think. Oh no, wait. I think so. No. No, we were here I was here last April, I wanna say. It was with Nile, right? Right. Yeah. So not quite two years. Just not. And obviously, dude, I mean, the day I heard that you were leaving the Black Dollar Murder, I was heartbroken because I love you in the band. I know you had to make the decision for yourself. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that decision-making process? Um, yeah, it was a, a, a huge decision, um, and it was uh, bittersweet, you know. Um, I think I got to the point in my life where uh, I needed a really big change, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I needed a huge break, and that doesn't really exist in, in a, a, a band that towards that much you know what I mean like you're either in it or you're not um, and uh, so I really needed to like hit the long reset button you know what I mean like uh, just things going on in my life I wanted to figure out what it was I wanted to do and um, really just needed to step away for a while um, I hadn't you know with intentions of opening up a tattoo shop and um, those plans have changed um, my wife's still opening up a, uh, she's opening up a private studio instead of a full on tattoo shop so um, she's still going to be tattooing there, but she doesn't really need somebody to run it. So, hence, I'm, I don't really need to be there for that. Um, she's going to do, do her thing or whatever. Um, I took about a year and a half, um, no touring. Um, I, I did a couple studio records. You know, I, I played on this Battle Cross record. They uh, came into a pinch. You know, and I, we've been friends for a while. Um, you know, I was kind of involved with them when they were, you know, talking to Metal Blade originally. And, um, that worked out. And then uh, I did. Uh, couple two more studio things this year that I aren't released yet um, two projects that I've been working on for quite a while um, I did two two live shows actually with the old hardcore band called Damnation AD um, you know, they don't they don't play a lot but uh, it's fun to go out and play some stuff like that um, aside from that really it's just like recalibrating you know like uh, like I said like a long long restart button you know what I mean um, just to figure out what it is I want to do and you know um, for a while, I didn't. I didn't really feel like I, I wanted to keep touring because it's it's a it's a tough life. You know, what I mean, it's a hard lifestyle, and I've been doing it for a long time. Um, you know, I had a couple years with all the remains before Black Dahlia, so um, been out doing it for a bit. Um, and then, you know, I, I did the home thing for a while, and uh, it finally got to that point where I started to get that itch again, and you know, figured you know maybe there's there's more things out there for me to conquer and more things for me to do and. Um, yeah, it, it just kind of happened the way it did. Like, uh, Battlecross, you know, has been taking out different drummers over the last, you know, six months or whatever. And they had Kevin Talley for a while. And um, then they had uh, Adam Pierce uh, from Marshall Parish was out drumming with him for a little while. And um, Adam had to take a step back for just a little bit. And, um, you know, they hit me up and were like, hey, man, we got some we got some shows coming up in December, you know, and then, you know, a little bit of stuff in the new year. Like, you, you know, would you like to come out and play? And I was like, you know what? Yeah, sounds like fun. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't feel like I should should sit at home forever. You know, what I mean, uh, uh, playing drums is what I like to do, and you know, like I took I took enough time away from it to like you know rekindle that love with playing, and you know, really that's what it all boils down to. I just I just want to play music, you know, so it's a good opportunity. What were some of the hardships you were facing, you know, being on the tour circuit for such a long time, touring circuit for such a long time that you were kind of like, you know, I really got to take some time off? Um, I mean, I think anybody, anybody who's ever toured can, can vouch for this, that it's, it's definitely really hard on relationships and it's tough to have any kind of normal life, you know what I mean? Um, when you leave for tour, you put your life on hold, but everybody else, their life keeps going. So your family and your friends, 
you know, their life carries on. And after a while, you come back and you, you really realize how much time just flew by and how much you've missed. I mean, people are getting older, kids are growing up, you know, people are getting married. All sorts of stuff is happening in life. And uh, you, know, you get to a point where you're like, you know, you, you miss your family, you miss your friends, and you're like, you know, I'd really like to go home for a while. You know what I mean? I'd like to see my family, my friends, and, you know, that kind of stuff's important. Um, but at the end of the day, all the people that love you are going to be there regardless. You know what I mean? Like, when you come back, they're still going to be there for you. Um, and, you know, the people in my life that have always been really supportive are very supportive, you know, and they've always been like, dude, go. You know what I mean? It's a great opportunity. Go, go, go play, you know. Um, so really, I mean, ultimately it was that. I mean, I think at some point a lot of touring musicians are like, do I keep doing this? And, you know, am I going to lose my sanity? Um, but uh, sometimes a big break is all you need. So a little brother, you're going to get back into it. And obviously the big question that the fans ask is, would you go back to like a full-time touring band, let's say maybe back to the Black Dahlia or, you know, joining Battle Cross full-time or you don't know yet? Um, I'm, right now I'm, I'm sort of playing it by ear. Um, as far as Black Dahlia is concerned, they have another drummer. I mean, they had to kind of carry on. You know, I realized that when I left. Um, and I think Alan Cassidy is a great fit for their band. Um, Personality-wise, I think he's perfect for them. You know what I mean? Like he's... Uh, He's just got, he, he's got that BDM vibe to him. I think he's a fantastic drummer. You know, and I, I was active in helping them pick a drummer I felt would do a good job. And he's, he's doing a great job. Um, so they're set. They don't, they don't really need me. Um, and uh, I, I'm not opposed to it. I'm really not. Like, um, I'm just kind of seeing where things take me right now. Instead of making any weird commitments or anything, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to go play some shows. I'm just going to have fun and see what happens. You know what I mean? If that's where it goes, and that's where it goes. Um, but I'm not opposed to it. I guess I'm just really open at this point. And as a session drummer, it's not a bad gig at all because you'll go do the project and then you can go back home and kind of, you know, regroup, do your own thing, you know? It is. Um, I mean, the thing is, as a musician, if you want to make a living out of it, you got to tour. You know what I mean? Like, doing, just doing, you know, session studio work, it, it can be lucrative, but, I mean, at the same time, um, if you want to hold out for, like, the cool high profile gigs you know or bands that are just on labels those might happen once every six months or so you know what i mean or, or maybe not even six months it might be one a year so you can't really make a living off of that but um uh definitely touring is is the the, the way you're gonna you know pay your bills right. and uh drumming wise when do you take us into the techniques that you use let's say while you're recording the studio and then of course when you're performing on stage and how you know some apply to some occasions some apply to other occasions as far as drumming goes um, I mean, this the same preparation kind of goes into both. I mean, it, getting prepared to go in the studio or getting prepared to go play live, I find myself playing like every day. Um, you know, anywhere between an hour to two hours. Uh, anything over that, and I feel like you're overworking your body a little bit, you know what I mean? Especially for extreme music. Um, so a lot of it's just the same stuff. Playing the songs, um, playing to a, a, like a metronome, um, strength training really as a drummer. Um, just building that like that I guess that mental confidence you know what I mean like where you just kind of let your body do what it does you know but um, my nerves always kick in you know I'm always always nervous no matter what the scenario is so um, but really really to me they're, they're not really all that different you know and uh, what, what are some of your like your go to cymbals go to snares go to kick drums what do you like playing man um, well, that's kind of tough to say. <laughs> I've used a few different snares um, on a few different records. Um, as far as drums, uh, I play Tama. I have a Star Classic Birch Babinga kit that um, I've actually been using the same shells for quite a while now. Like a couple Black Dahlia records had the same kit, you know, um, and uh, I love them. Uh, my favorite snare that I use live is a Star Classic Copper. Um, it's just, it, it just seems to be perfect for what I want. Um, I have used a Drumcraft um, bell brass snare in the studio that just blew my mind. Real expensive. <laughs> Wasn't mine, but uh, I was glad to use it. Um, I mean, really, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of a creature of habit, but I also think that um, as a drummer, you can create a sound that sounds like you. you know, and I think some of that has to do with like, like how, you know, what your setup is, you know what I mean? So there are specific things in my kit that I feel like I wouldn't be me without, you know, my ride, for example, I've been using the same ride for like seven, eight years because I feel like I fell in love with it. Ever since then, I feel like it's just 
and people compliment like what is that ride that ride sounds so good like um, I don't know like I, I feel like people do develop things about their playing you know what I mean that you that will stand out and you can you can hear in a record you'd be like oh that sounds like so and so um, so I guess I'm kind of a creature of habit in that in that sense um, it's it's honestly almost the same uh, right now I'm using the same kit setup I'll, almost exactly the same as I used in BDM uh, I just took out a bell and added a second splash instead um, so other than that it's almost all the same <laughs> I had to ask you that because obviously there are a lot of drummers watching they're always like kind of like oh how does he do that how does he do that you know what I mean so it's always good to kind of cover those bases anything else you want to tell the fans watching right now man um I just want to say thanks to anybody who's you know ever commented on anything or messaged me on online about you know uh, my future projects or you know uh, coming out to see me play with, with you know with Battlecross live or anything like that it's really cool to like see people stay supportive no matter what project you do you know what I mean and it's nice that people understand like sometimes you have to do something different in life you know what I mean you have to have another chapter in your book and you know like not limit yourself to one thing you know I mean there's other styles and things that I kind of want to you know mess with and you know that's really cool and uh, I'm, I'm going to be going to Europe with Battlecross in uh, late January uh, it's their first time over there so I'm really excited for them um, going over with Trivium and Killswitch Engage so it's, it's a cool tour um, heading back over in the summer for some big festivals so um, I, you know, I hope everybody comes out and hangs out and, and that's it man I'm here to rock and roll All right, brother, I want to thank you. Thank you. And you guys watching, as you said, he's not going anywhere, man. Just because he stepped away for a little bit, he's still here. He's still battling with the cross. 